the Jimmy Olsen Radio Network. Spinal adjustments provided by Dr. Chad Rolfson. The Spinal Tuning Chiropractic Center is a Des Moines area low flat fee per month unlimited chiropractic care practice. When life happens, just adjust. Schedule today at SpinalTuning.com. Barbecue provided by Kenny's Rib Wagon. Catering ribs for your pleasure and serving daily at Plaza Pub, 62nd and Douglas in Des Moines across from Merle Hay Mall. Find Kenny's Rib Wagon on Facebook. It's Bible story time, 1 Samuel 14, 1 through 46. One day, Jonathan said to the young man who carried his weapons, let's go across to the Philistine camp. But Jonathan did not tell his father Saul, who was camping under the pomegranate tree in Migron, not far from Gilbeth. He had about 600 men with him, the priest carrying the pod with Aijah, and the son of Ichabod's brother, Aitab, who was the son of Phinehas and the grandson of Eli, the priest of the Lord of Shiloh. Now the men did not know that Jonathan had left. In Michmash Pass, which Jonathan had to go through to get over to the Philistine camp, there were two large jagged rocks, one on each side of the pass. One was called Bazes, the other Seneth, one was on the north side of the pass facing Michmash, and the other was on the south side facing Geba. Jonathan said to the young men, let's cross over to the camp of those heathens, Philistines. Maybe the Lord will help us. If he does, nothing can keep him from giving us the victory, no matter how few of us there are. The young man answered, well, whatever you want to do, I'm with you. All right, Jonathan said, we'll go across and let the Philistines see us. If they tell us to wait for them to come to us, we will stay where we are. But if they tell us to go to them, then we will, because that will be the sign that the Lord has given us victory over them. So they let the Philistines see them. And the Philistines said, Look, some Hebrews are coming out of the holes that they're hiding in. Then they call out to Jonathan and the young man, Come on up here. We have something to tell you. Jonathan said to the young man, Follow me. The Lord has given Israel victory over them. Jonathan climbed up over the pass on his hands and knees. And the young man followed him. Jonathan attacked the Philistines and knocked them down. And the young men killed them. In the first slaughter, Jonathan and the young men killed about 20 men in the area of about half an acre. All the Philistines in the countryside were terrified. The raiders and the soldiers in the camp trembled with fear. The earth shook and there was great panic. Saul's men on watch at Gibbeth in the territory of Benjamin saw that the Philistines running in confusion. So Saul said to the men, Count the soldiers and find out how many is missing. Now, who is missing? They did so and found out that Jonathan and the young man who carried his weapons were missing. Bring the ephod here, Saul said to Ijah, the priest. Now, on that day, Ijah was carrying it in front of the people of Israel. As Saul was speaking to the priest, the confusion of the Philistine camp kept getting worse. So Saul said to him, There's no time to consult the Lord. Then he and his men marched into battle against the Philistines, who were fighting each other in complete confusion. Some Hebrews, who had been on the Philistine side and had gone with them to the camp, changed sides again and joined Saul and Jonathan. Others, who had been hiding in the hills of Ephraim, heard that the Philistines were running away, so they joined in and attacked the Philistines, fighting all the way through and beyond the Beth Haven. The Lord said Israel saved Israel that day. The Israelites were weak with hunger that day, but Saul, because Saul, with the solemn oath, had given him the order, a curse beyond anyone who eats any food today before I take revenge on my enemies. So nobody had eaten anything all day. They came into the wooded area and found honey everywhere. The woods were full of honey. But no one ate any because they were all afraid of Saul's curse. But Jonathan 
had not heard his father threaten the people with the curse. So he reached out with a stick he was carrying, dipped it in the honeycomb, and ate some honey. And at once felt much better. But one of the men told him, We are all weak from hunger, but your father threatened us and said, A curse be upon anyone who eats any food today. Jonathan answered, What a terrible thing my father has done to our people. See how much better I feel because I ate some honey? How much better it would be, or have been today, if other people had eaten the food they took when they defeated the enemy? Just think how many more Philistines they would have killed. That day, the Israelites defeated the Philistines, fighting all the way to Michmash, to Ajalon. By this time, the Israelites were very weak from hunger, and so they rushed over to what they had captured from the enemy, took sheep and cattle, slaughtered them on the spot, and ate the meat with the blood still in it. Saul was told, Look, the people are sitting against the Lord by eating meat with blood in it. You are traitors, Saul cried out. Roll a big stone over here to me. Then he gave another order. Go among the people and tell them to bring the cattle and sheep here. They are to slaughter them and eat them here. They must not sin against the Lord by eating meat with blood in it. So that night they all brought their cattle and slaughtered them there. Saul built an altar to the Lord, the first one that he had built. Saul said to his men, let's go down and attack the Philistines in the night, plunder them under dawn and killing them all. Do whatever you think is best, they answered. But the priest said, let's consult God first. So Saul asked God, shall I attack the Philistines? Will you give us victory? But God did not answer that day. Then Saul said to the leaders of the people, come here and find out what sin was committed today. I promise by the living Lord who gives Israel victory that the guilty one will be put to death, even if it is my son, Jonathan. But no one said anything. Then Saul said to them, all of you stand over there and Jonathan and I will stand over here. Do whatever you think is best, they answered. Saul said to the Lord, the God of Israel, Lord, why have you not answered me today? Lord, God of Israel, answer me by the sacred stones. If the guilt is Jonathan's or mine, answer by the Urim. But if it belongs to the people of Israel, answer by the Thummim. The answer indicated Jonathan and Saul, and the people were cleared. Then Saul said, Decide between my son, Jonathan, and me. And Jonathan was indicated. Then Saul asked Jonathan, What have you done? Jonathan answered, I ate a little honey with the stick I was holding. Here I am. I'm ready to die. Saul said to him, May God strike me dead if you are not put to death. But the people said to Saul, Will Jonathan, who won this great victory for Israel, be put to death? No. We promise by the living Lord that he will not even lose a hair from his head. What he did today was done with God's help. So the people saved Jonathan from being put to death. After that, Saul stopped pursuing the Philistines, and they went back into their own territory. 1 Samuel 14, 1 through 46. If you enjoyed Bible Story Time, you can share it with others on social media, both Facebook and Twitter, and you can follow me, my buddy Jimmy, as well as on YouTube at my buddy Jimmy101. Also, would you share a rating where you listen to your favorite podcasts and a comment? I would greatly appreciate it. The Jimmy Olsen Radio Network.